talk to you today about um, like creating sort of fake, well not fake, but eroded sort of surfaces on your clay, in your pottery. Um, I, I collect, well not, I don't really collect, but I mean I've, I was just looking around the studio and I've got this piece of wood um, that, I, that I did actually bring all the way back from the southernmost tip of Africa, weirdly, because I just liked it. <laughs> It's not very heavy, so it was all right in the old luggage. But um, but I really like the way it's sort of like eroded away, you know, and there's little, I don't know what's happened to it, whether things have burrowed into it or or what really. But anyway, I like it. And when I was at uni, I did a lot of um, a lot of tests, mixing loads of different, different materials into clay and um, like combustible materials and other materials actually, and just to see what would happen. Um, you can get some really nice uh, surface textures quite easily using like normal household stuff that you'd find in your kitchen. So I was going to talk to you about that. Um, yeah, this is like just this random piece of pottery that, you know, everything's so dusty and I've just had to dust it all off, you know, outside. It's been, the clay dust gets everywhere. But yeah, this is um, quite a nice, I, I quite like this, so that's just like got a really nice it's just terracotta an eroded sort of looking surface and I'm going to show you how to get something like that and other things as well um, it's quite thin it's just a random weird little weird little thing I've got in my studio but that kind of like like organic eroded kind of look can be can be really lovely so I have rolled out um, some tiles they're not terracotta, they're just like a buff clay. I've just given them a light um, coating of white slip and we're going to, oh, is that all right? Can you see properly? That's probably a bit better. And I've got some stuff from the kitchen, so I feel like I'm doing a cookery programme now. <laughs> so I'm going to sprinkle some red split lentils onto that one um, because anything that is sort of like organic uh, will burn away in the kiln, okay? So I've got some rolled oats, some jumbo rolled oats. I've never tried those actually, but I thought maybe they might be quite, quite interesting. Let's see. Uh, I've got some yellow split peas. They're quite chunky. So they remind me of when one time when I rolled in, when I mixed in um, polystyrene balls uh, into clay. That's, you know, it's not very good because then you've got to burn the polystyrene balls, obviously. But this was like 15 years ago when we weren't so acutely aware of burning plastic and how awful that is. Um, anyway, rice, some basmati rice. Let's chuck a bit of that on there. Um, and I actually, I've not tried this either. This is just like different bits of spaghetti <laughs> that I've kind of broken into little pieces. So, oh, I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, it will just burn away the kiln. And last but not least, my favourite, which is couscous. Couscous is really great for this kind of thing. That's what this one is, is couscous. That's actually just couscous that's burned away. So once you've sprinkled it all in to your tiles, or whatever it is, you know, I mean, these are just test tiles. So if you were doing something like on a, you know, it'd be good to like do this on the flat and then make something out of it. I mean, you can sometimes kind of push material into like a vertical surface or a curved surface with using the back of a spoon. That kind of works. So what you want to do is really like embed it right into the surface of the clay. So I'll bring that up close. So can you see? So that's actually flat now. It's all completely in the clay because um, you want it to kind of grip in. You want it to give that really good texture. Oh, the oats are quite hard to roll in. I don't know if they'll be any good, really. Let's try the chickpeas. Not chickpeas, they'd be a bit big, wouldn't they? <laughs> you could use chickpeas, you could give it give it a go, but they'd be chunky. The yellow split peas, right, got them. Um, oh, the rice, that went in nicely. I think that might be quite good, actually. And I know that the uh, couscous is gonna be amazing. Get that out of the way. And last but not least, the spaghetti. I suppose you could kind of place the spaghetti, you know, carefully. Oh, that's quite satisfying. Do you hear that? It's like, okay. So I can just show you, I mean, it's not rocket science. 
but um, you know how how it's gone completely flat into the clay. Oh, I love this one. Look, this goes. Oops. You can see that's going to come out nice and sort of random. The rice looks like it could be quite quite good as well. Completely embedded into the surface and the spaghetti. I'm thinking that might be quite good as well. You know, I mean, they're test house. Oh, and the oats. There you go. Oops. I mean, that, they won't be particularly deep, but they might be quite interesting. I mean, the thing is, you've just got to try these things. So what we're going to do, I'm actually going to do this video in two parts. So today, I've just shown you that you can basically roll um, combustible stuff into your clay. Um, and then I'm going to, obviously, I'm going to fire this stuff and all of all of the combustible, you know, organic materials will burn away in the kiln. And then I will do the second bit of this video where I'm going to show you how they've turned out and what you can do with your um, with your eroded, impressed surfaces. Uh, yeah, so this is the first half. My brilliant editing will bring you the second half very soon. Bye for now. Okay, hi, I'm back. <laughs> so it's like over a week after I did the other half of the video, so <laughs> if it doesn't go seamlessly, that's why. I just want to show you the results of the firing. So that one was the um, uh, red lentils. That's the couscous. You can see how the materials just burned away. And I'm quite pleased with the rice. That looks quite cool, doesn't it? You can see how it's gone right in. And um, the oats, mm, they don't, you know, I'm not overly keen on that one. And that was the yellow split peas, which I put some underglaze on in the little gaps you can't really see. And that's a spaghetti. So I thought the spaghetti worked quite well, actually. You could really like do some fun things with the spaghetti. Um, so yeah, basically what you can do with your, um, with your tiles or whatever you've done, and you've got this kind of surface, you've got all your texture in there. And one of the things you could do is if you wanted to get like a sort of, um, oxide kind of finish like this one that we had a look at earlier on that's just copper oxide um, mixed with water but if you mix your oxide in with um, underglaze medium then you can glaze straight over the top of it and it won't smear and smudge everywhere like if you look well if you look at this one you know it's quite the the copper is quite sort of you know, it's green everywhere. I can hear Bertie at the door scratching to come in. I'm just going to ignore him. Um, but if you mix your mix your oxide with a bit of underglaze medium, okay, and then what you can do is you can get it to go right in all the all the little texturized bits. You want it to sort of, you know, you want to kind of pile quite a lot on so that it goes right in there. Okay, like that. So it goes right in all the little in all the little gaps. Let that dry a little bit. I'm going to do the same with the couscous. Let's get that in there. I mean, the thing about mixing your oxide with the underglaze medium, okay, is that when you glaze it, you can glaze it straight away, and it won't, you know, the underglaze kind of encapsulates the oxide so that, um, so that when you do brush your transparent glaze over the top, it doesn't contaminate the glaze, it just, it's set in there and you don't get all the smeary glaze marks. And so it is quite good to mix it with the pigment-free underglaze medium and give that a go. Or you could just literally um, do it with underglaze, you know? So again, you could get your underglaze medium, make your color up, um, have a look at the other video about that. So this is just black underglaze. It looks exactly the same as the, that one's copper oxide, copper manganese actually. So I'm just going to get up because I want, what I want is for the textury bits to be black. And then I think I'll do, I'll do like a green or something over the top. So you just want it to get in to all the little dips because you're going to sponge it off in a minute. Okay. So what about these oats? I don't think these are going to work that well. So I think we'll just do that because they're not deep enough to, you know, when I sponge, I think I'm going to be lifting it out of the deep, out of the shallowness of of the texture you know but it's worth trying i mean it's quite a nice texture but i just think mm, it's not going to be that good 
Okay, so I just want to, let's see, this one's sort of dry, the couscous. Okay, so then you're going to get a damp sponge, squeeze your sponge out, and you're just going to sponge off that oxide mixture so that basically it's just staying in the indentations and you're just taking it off the surface, you see. Can you see? Okay. And then it really shows it up. All right. And also, um, that's going to react with the glaze. So, because it's an oxide, I'm just going to show you this one as well. This is the rice. I'm quite excited about the rice, actually. Let me move my water over here. Look, that's better. So... I'm just using a flat sponge because I don't want to actually sponge it out of its little dips, you know. That is looking good. This is going to be really fun, actually. Okay, so there, you can see how the colour sits into the um, texture. Right, let's have a go with this one. This is just black underglaze. Uh, it's not quite dry yet, but let's just take it off anyway. It'll be all right. So I'm just wiping that across the surface and you can see how it's just sticking in the holes. Uh, so that's, that's working quite well. So this was the red, the red lentils, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, actually, that's quite nice. Quite a, good little, quite a good little thing we've got there. And the oats, let's see what this is like. I've got a feeling it's gonna, oh well, nice. Not too bad, because I'm being quite gentle with my flat sponge. But I mean, I don't think it's the most incredible texture. I probably wouldn't bother again. It's okay, but you know, it's not like that. So, um, as I say, with your oxide mixture into the underglaze, um, you can glaze straight on top, a brush on glaze, and it won't smear, you know? Those of you that have ever tried to do it with um, with just oxide mixed with water, you'll know that it kind of, it smears a bit. It can do anyway. So you can just glaze straight on top. There you go. Um, and the same with this one. I'll just let that dry a little bit actually before I glaze it. But you get the idea. So you can basically put underglaze into the textures and, you know, wipe it back. And yeah, you get these nice, more kind of organic texture. Sometimes it's quite hard to create like, you know, that kind of texture with a tool. You just can't really do it. So give it a go, roll in some food stuffs into your clay and see how it turns out. And yeah, have fun with it. Bye. Hi, so these are the finished tiles. There's your rice. Couscous. Uh, what was that one again? Split peas spaghetti and the lentils <laughs> so there you go you can see how the copper has kind of reacted with the glaze on these two um, and just sort of you've, you've got that kind of green halo that comes out when you when you get oxide that reacts with glaze um, yeah so there's the results give it a go it's really good fun bye for now